in this video something about oscillation conditions. Here I'm working on a field effect transistor oscillator, completely experimental. I don't know whether it will work, perhaps it will never work. But the only thing that I want to show with this video is uh, how you can recognize when an oscillator perhaps will start to work. I have here a field effect transistor, hope it's visible. This small BF245B and the whole circuit is made complete, completely experimental with loose wirings etc. etc. Also here a potentiometer in the uh, source lead, a potentiometer to the drain and here's the gate. So I don't know whether this oscillator, oscillator will work or not. Perhaps I get it functioning. But what I wanted to show is that when you see some kind of things on the oscilloscope you are on the right way to develop a working oscillator. That's what I want to show now. I'm, I'm going to turn these two potentiometers here and let's see what happens on the scope. At first you can see that when I touch the gate there is amplification and with an oscillator we always have an amplificating element, a tube or a field effect transistor or a bipolar transistor. So that's good. This means when I touch the gate that the field effect transistor is healthy. Now I turn the potentiometer and this is good behavior to get, now I turn that potentiometer, to get on a certain moment a proper oscillation. You can conclude from this effect that you see that the, that the um, field effect transistor in this case works and what you see now in fact is the noise in the circuit and always there must be noise to make an oscillator running. All oscillators, as far as I know, or all simple oscillators, start with noise in the circuit. That noise is a broadband, um, a broadband uh, frequency band, and in many cases, almost all cases, there is a frequency depending element. Not at this moment here, but normally here there is a coil frequency dependent element and the noise is amplified, sent back from the input to the output etc etc and only on the frequency from say for instance such a frequency dependent element a coil with a bridge capacitor um, that frequency is amplified, sent back and then the whole circuit starts to generate. Again, back to the potentiometer. This is a healthy behavior from an oscillator that doesn't want to start. Now I turn the uh, power supply to the potential, uh, sorry, to the oscillator, and you can also see that it moves the output. But that's also normal. It's kind of DC present at the output from uh, at the output yes from the oscillator. But this is the most important thing. This behavior, when you see this you can be sure on the longer term when you do more experiments with other capacitors etc etc that this oscillator will start to oscillate on a certain moment. So that's all that was to tell oscillation conditions. Of course this depends a lot on the type of oscillator. Here I want to make a sine wave oscillator. A sine wave oscillator has the property that 
um, it has to amplify approximately one times. So we must not drive the output from such an oscillator to the, the voltage. And when that happens there is no sine wave. So a sine wave oscillator has a quite critical um, uh, process to start and to keep the sine wave properly on all frequencies. So that means in fact for a sine wave oscillator that you have to adapt the amplification uh, on the whole frequency band where you want to use it. But for a square wave oscillator there's no problem at all. They are in fact very simple. Anyway, something about um, oscillation conditions. Wish you luck.